cable access TV up in Burlington, and my friend Willis is, I don't know how to describe Willis, he's just, he's just this outrageous, local strange, Vermont kind local of. Vermont songwriter, singer kind of guy. And he, he had his TV debut, and they do three songs, and then uh, a three-song set, and another three-song set, and then about a 15-minute interview, and it was just a really, <laughs> it was all, you know. That's just so amazing. grew up in Vermont, and, you know, Plainfield, he's, yeah. guy who lived in a car for most <laughs> yeah. of his life in, in Plainfield, Vermont, uh -huh. which is a very small Vermont town, and he writes these songs about his life. So some of his songs are like, "I don't like hitchhiking." <laughs> I don't like hitchhiking. Man, you drove by me and didn't pick me up. Someday I'll have a car and I'll drive by you. We all know what it feels like. But it just, it just, just kind of starts with a theme and just, just, it all just kind of comes off the top of his head. And the other thing about him is that he doesn't know how to keep a beat. But yeah. when I, I, I mean genuinely uh -huh. incapable of, of keeping a, a, what you would normally think Regular of as, meter as a beat. So Fish plays drums in this band and he just just follows it. Uh -huh. it's like it's sort of like John Lee Hooker or something. So you're just following the vocal, basically. Just up and yeah. slowing down, speeding up. Uh -huh. The whole song is always... Uh, it's a lot like sort of the way John Lee Hooker would add like a couple of verses and then switch mm -hmm. to the next chord, but uh, but times Even more 50. erratically, yeah. I mean... I'm uh, dropping like 16th notes in a little <laughs> tiny... <laughs> <laughs> when, he gets, when he gets into it, it speeds up and the whole band just speeds up with it. It's, and you so his incredible. whole neck and all his... Music. <laughs> Kind of heavy metal. It's kind of heavy metal. wild in the jungle, you know. <laughs> totally out of control. <laughs> he was, he, I always describe him as a person who carries like a, a stadium crowd around in his mind at all times. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's like, well, play me that new tune you're well, so he's just, uh, I mean, it's like he's, he's on a huge stage. A porn star. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. That is incredible. Hey, Paige. Yes. Can you step forward one sure. step, please? Sure. Like that? Data, is that better? How are we doing? Right there. Don't move your feet. Shant. Oh, really? The shant move. We're okay? We're good. It's interesting watching that lower. Well, you can't see it probably from where you are, but it's in inverse now. There's the whole lower is the whole group, but flipped? Flipped, yeah, which just, I don't know something about that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're sitting there and you're sitting there. Okay, we're good, right? Okay. Uh, a lot of this is going to be, as you would might suspect people who don't know the band. Okay. Sure. Uh, so I might be asking some stuff that might seem like well, it's obvious or whatever. Sure. Three, uh, three guys were engineers of various. That's right. Started, well, started off one yeah. way, way, way back. Mm -hmm. This is before bands and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All bands. And another bands. was a uh, starting off on the road as a philosopher. How'd you get sidetracked into music? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe was music always there? That's a good question for you. Well, actually a lot of electrical engineers end up being bass players in, in particular, or musicians, <laughs> according to my, um, my professor. But, um, <laughs> so it's not, but uh, yeah, I think we were just walking through the, the dorm hallways and heard each other play. Um, and uh, Hooked up that kind of that kind of way, and uh, for me though, I, I've got to say that I was an electrical engineering student, and it was a really good juxtaposition to to have lots of tests and you know stuff that I couldn't even fathom, and then unwind by by going to band practice and having long jam sessions. So they kind of complemented each other. We had an interesting moment um, when we first started. Mike was. Probably the most serious engineering student. Fish was a, was a, attempting to be one, but uh, the least serious. The least serious. But <laughs> we, played a, serious. we played a show at Goddard College uh, in a round. Um, there was a cafeteria that had sort of a spire on mm -hmm. the side, and so the base of it was circular and probably I don't know eight or ten feet in yeah, diameter. Twelve feet around, something like that. And uh, so we played in there, and there was one person that came to to see this show standing in front of us and somewhere in the middle of the of the of the set we were improvising and Mike started to have uh, almost a spiritual or religious 
awakening. So we were all watching him, and, and he started to sort of vibrate up and down, and um, was playing one note. He kind of simplified all the music down to one note. Uh -huh. and, uh, and eventually, after about an hour of this, put down his bass and ran into the woods. We followed him into the woods, and... Um, he started talking about how he's ready to give up his car and... I wasn't know. even going to come back from the woods, actually. He didn't. He <laughs> 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 really didn't want to. He had to talk him out of the woods. A few more days and it would be semiconductor physics or you know, quantum <laughs> mechanics. Or. And then you wrote that song about engineers. Oh, right. Remember? Right. Engineers... Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. You know, they, they don't care where the missiles go. They don't care where the missiles go. And that was it. And then you became a religion. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was an away thing. Shortly after that, <laughs> and the other actually, I, I think, think the ex the real explanation for it all is that n I think my criteria was with myself and the other three members was I I don't think any of us ever had a choice as as to whether right. it be musicians or not. So that was always a good feeling to me. Like you know, well, none of these people are going to be able to do anything else other than play music. <laughs> so <laughs> so we have a good chance. You give it the most valiant attempt. Yeah. To do something else. He yeah. did. He gave it. He almost escaped. In vain, I tried. <laughs> he almost escaped. <laughs> escaped your own destiny. Hold it. In uh, I'm going to jump to another subject. Sure. I'm going to jump to a recording a, a record versus live performance. And uh, you've said something to the effect of that the studio shouldn't be about recapturing a live show. So let's. Well, let's just talk about those two different universes and how they, where they intersect and where they uh, are completely different. <clears throat> uh, we, we've been playing together for 15 years and uh, mostly just working on our live, live show for the last 15 years uh, with albums coming along every few years or as they came about. In the last, in the last uh, handful of years, we've really tried to uh, make the the studio experience a little bit more um, spontaneous and a little bit more human. Uh, oftentimes, if, if if you're playing a live show, it's you can feed off the energy of the crowd. You can feed off the energy mem of the other band members and whatever the, the 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 feeling of that night is. And when you get into the studio, it can oftentimes feel a little bit sterile. And uh, we've tried to, through different experiments, just uh, expand our uh, expand it as a as a place to experiment uh, in in different ways. Especially this last album, we started out by recording a number of different jam sessions and going and recording for four days at a time, just improvising and finding little bits that that worked and really seemed to be connecting and and say, okay, let's start with this for a basis of a song and and. Uh, how little? Would it be like a four-bar section or little, just eight bars? As little as four bars? bars and as long as maybe four minutes that would be uh -huh. used uh, in, in total. Uh, Which could be extracted from an hour-long jam, maybe. Yeah. And it's then where you kind of <coughs> cut, cut and mentally, paste. mentally cut and paste and yeah. go, hey, that could be the start of the song, take this one from this other. A couple of songs, surprisingly enough, and this might just be from playing uh, together for many years, seem to take on a natural song uh -huh. structure and there are songs on the new album there's one called Rogue um, that <coughs> we spontaneously had sort of an A section a B section back to the chorus mm -hmm. mostly probably defined by Fish going to the cymbal uh -huh. Paige bringing in the organ or something and when we listened to it it just sat as a song so what you hear on the album is for the most part an uh, improvised section yeah, it started off, mm -hmm. but yeah, but kind of had a song structure. Took on too. its own its own form, which was which was interesting. And some of the stuff we would we would edit together, but a lot of the the, the tunes on the new album. You know, there was another experience we had this time that was a, a change for us, where we we recorded the album in different settings. Um, some of it was recorded in a traditional studio, but most of the vocals were written and recorded in a farmhouse. Uh huh. Uh, in northern Vermont, and it was just the four of us with uh, portable gear, and uh, we found that that has a real effect. Did you do you ever do studio things with no and think when this is never going to be performed live? This was only a well, that was, was the only idea something behind this new album. Uh -huh. You know, we I don't think we knew we were making an album, uh -huh. so and we usually get 
over analytical when we yeah. are making an album. Yeah, so. we had no goals in mind, just to experiment.